Daily Disquiet. This comes from Fernando Pessoa's The Book of Disquiet. Text number 64, which is where I left off a few months ago when I stopped reading this and began reading uh, something else. I weep over my imperfect pages, but if future generations read them, they will be more touched by my weeping than by any perfection I might have achieved, since perfection would have kept me from weeping, and therefore from writing. Perfection never materializes. The saint weeps and is human. God is silent. That is why we can love the saint, but cannot love God. Daily Disquiet. Text number 65 from Fernando Pessoa's The Book of Disquiet, translated by Richard Zenith. That noble and divine timidity which guards the soul's treasures and regalia. How I'd love to infect at least one soul with some kind of poison, worry, or disquiet. This would console me a little for my chronic failure to take action. My life's purpose would be to pervert but do my words ring in anyone else's soul? Does anyone hear them besides me? Text number 66. We generally color our... Well, it's entitled with a shrug. With a shrug. We generally color our ideas of the unknown with our notions of the known. If we call death a sleep, it's because it seems like sleep on the outside. If we call death a new life, it's because it seems like something different from life. With slight misconceptions of reality, we fabricate our hopes and beliefs, and we live off crusts that we call cakes, like poor children who make believe they're happy. But that's how all life is, or at least that particular system of life generally known as civilization. Civilization consists in giving something a name that doesn't belong to it, and then dreaming over the result. And the false name joined to the true dream does create a new reality. The object does change into something else because we make it change. We manufacture realities. The raw material remains the same, but our art gives it a form that makes it into something not the same. A pine wood table is still pine wood, but it's also a table. We sit at the table, not at the pine wood. Although love is a sexual instinct, it is not with sexual instinct that we love, but with the conjecture of some other feeling. And that conjecture is already some other feeling. I don't know what subtle effect of light or vague noise or memory of a fragrance or melody intoned by some inscrutable external influence prompted these divagations when I was walking down the street in which now, seated in a cafe, I leisurely and distractedly record. I don't know where I was going with my thoughts, nor where I would wish to go. Today, there is a light, warm and humid fog, sad with no threats, monotonous for no reason. I am grieved by a feeling that I can't place. I am lacking an argument apropos I don't know what. I have no willpower in my nerves. Beneath my consciousness, I'm sad. And I write these carelessly written lines, not to say this, and not to say anything, but to give my distraction something to do. I slowly cover 
with the soft strokes of a dull pencil, I'm not sentimental enough to sharpen it, the white sandwich paper that they gave me in this cafe. For it suits me just fine, as would any other paper, as long as it was white. And I feel satisfied. I lean back. The afternoon comes to a monotonous and rainless close in an uncertain and despondent tone of light. And I stop writing because I stop writing. Fernando Pessoa, The Book of Disquiet. Translated by Richard Zenith. Published by Penguin Classics. Get you a copy. That's good stuff, man. That's just a tip. Just a tip.